Denise, when we hear the term oligarchs, we think of Russian tycoons. But in your book, you say that the US economy is dominated by a number of very large oligarch-run companies. The United States itself is an oligopoly. Can you tell us a little bit more about this, please? Sure. So we tend to think of uh, America as sort of the bastion of free markets. And uh, when we were researching for our book, what we came to realize was actually that industry after industry is dominated by you know, two to three major players. And it's we've had 40 years of consolidation. And if you think about the Sweet 16 in, in basketball, where you go from 16 teams down to eight, down to four, down to two, that's essentially what we've had through mergers and acquisitions over the last 40 years, leaving industries dominated by a few companies, and the word for that is oligopolies. Uh, and so that's what we see, and that is the picture of American capitalism today. The airline industry, the finance and banking industry, these are some of the, the, the sectors that you focus on in the bo book in which there is a, a really high concentration of power. There's not a lot of competition there. Mm -hmm. What effect does that have on the average citizen? Well, I think these are very intuitive examples, airlines and banking. We have, in the U.S., we have four airlines that dominate airline traffic, and we have five banks that control over half of the nation's banking assets. And people intuitively know when they go about their day-to-day -day lives that they are paying for, essentially, they're paying higher prices, and the service that you're, that you're receiving from these companies isn't necessarily improving. And so what we see is that uh, these companies become price makers, where uh, they can raise prices on consumers, and, uh, and then you don't necessarily get the benefits from those increased prices. And this leads to inequality in society, I understand from your book. Yeah, so as Americans and North Americans and, and uh, you know, other countries around the world, this is true too. As you go about your day-to-day -day life, you're actually transferring a little bit of your paycheck every day to monopolists and oligopolists. And this is one of the reasons that we see inequality proliferating the way that it has. Inequality is a symptom. It's not the disease. The true disease in our uh, perspective is industry concentration. And it's not just the United States. Let's be clear. We're here in Hong Kong in Asia why this is a problem, but in the Hong Kong economy we're dominated by, by a few very large uh, companies. Why don't you tell us about that? So I read this week as I was researching that 21 tycoons in Hong Kong own more assets than the Hong Kong Reserve. And wow. so you can see that Hong Kong is incredibly, although it is touted as you know, the freest economy in the world, there are high levels of concentration of economic power and of political power. Uh, and actually as well, Hong Kong is at a 45 year high in inequality. It's the highest it's been in 45 years. And so you can see that uh, these things do go together and they, they cause you know, real effects for real citizens that are struggling to make things work and make their lives work in a city such as Hong Kong. Denise Hearn, thank you for joining us. Thank you very much.